behalf of the University of Evansville Doctorate of Physical Therapy program and the White Coat Ceremony Committee, I would like to welcome each student, friend, and family member to this special celebration today. We are very excited to have the opportunity to continue this tradition honoring the physical therapy students here at the university, and it is each of your support that makes this possible. Friends and family, we as students know that is your support that allows us to continue to make small victories in the journey of completing our studies. And a very special thanks also goes out to our donors whose generous support makes this ceremony possible. Today marks a momentous occasion for the students seated here. Traditionally, white coats have been provided to students in the health field as a symbol of transition and transformation into a professional program. The white coats these students receive today is a symbol of healing, help, and most importantly, hope. This ceremony symbolizes commitment to the patients who will one day be treated by your capable hands. The growth and progress of physical therapy worldwide makes this an exciting time to be entering the profession. In Vision 2020, the American Physical Therapy Association states that physical therapists will earn a doctorate level degree. In doing so, the students here will be among the top 5% of doctor earners in the nation. Vision 2020 also states that by 2020, physical therapists will be viewed as primary care practitioners, which means that they will be treating patients without physician referral. In the last two years, all 50 states have gained some sort of direct access. We celebrate these milestones here today. While many of you will choose to not wear your white coat on a daily basis, let this ceremony be a reminder of everything that you have accomplished and everything you will accomplish in the future. Your coat represents hours of perseverance and sacrifice and serves as a reminder of your commitment to the core values of our profession. Accountability, altruism, compassion, excellence, integrity, professional duty, and social responsibility. Wear it proudly today as you begin this journey. My hope is that this ceremony will inspire you and at the same time, remind you of the duty to your chosen professional of physical therapy. Welcome, University of Evansville, Doctorate of Physical Therapy, Class of 2017. Um, I would like to now welcome Dr. Kyle Kiesel to the stage. He is our department chair, and today he will be giving um, an introduction of our esteemed faculty members. Good afternoon. I'm Kyle Kiesel, and I'm uh, excited to be here, and I would like to add my welcome to the class uh, and family and friends for our ceremony today. Uh, my role is, is pretty simple, uh, but really important. I get to introduce our faculty and staff. So we've chosen to put together uh, a few slides to talk about each of our um, faculty and staff, and I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to share that with you. First of all, our operators, operators administrator and director of admissions and advising is Sherry Chambliss. If you have more than one title after your name, you're very busy. Uh, Sherry holds things together for us. She's done an outstanding job for 18 years in our department. Um, she does have a bachelor's degree from the University of Evansville and uh, has a variety of personal interests uh, including uh, spending time with their granddaughter. And I would just like to thank Sherry and, and share with the rest of the, of the faculty and staff of her outstanding work over the last two years at least as we worked uh, hard on our accreditation that came through and, and, and we got in uh, over the summer. So Sherry uh, just did a tremendous amount of work on that, so I'd like to publicly thank her for that. Next is Zurei Shen. Uh, Dr. Chen comes from uh, Taiwan where she got her training in physical therapy and then got a PhD in biomechanics from the U University of Oregon. She's been with us uh, now in her second year. We're very excited to have uh, Zurei with us. Uh, her specialty area in teaching is in uh, rehabilitation of, of older adults and her area of research and expertise is in, in balance, gait, and posture. So she does a lot with um, fall prevention and has already uh, started fall prevention programs and research here at the university and is continuing to work uh, on those is such an uh, important area So we're excited to have dr. Chen with us. Um, she has a very uh, unique and interesting personal life as well She's a uh, accomplished musician. Uh, she likes jogging as you can see she put ping pong in there She's actually uh, a United States champion level ping pong player as well. So exciting <laughs> Next is dr. Shala Cunningham 
Shala gets the award for the most degrees and credentials, and she has earned every one of them. Uh, since I've known her, she's been in at least probably two programs ongoing, and she is currently in another doctoral program as well. So uh, Sharla is well known uh, around the country as a, as a top manual physical therapist, uh, teaches uh, around the world in manual therapy, uh, and as well as her research interest, uh, which is, uh, as, as the opening comments um, indicated, as we move to a doctoring profession, Sharla's interest in research and expertise is medical screening. So she's developed uh, unique uh, and novel tools to help with that and teaches that. and. A variety of other contents uh, within our program. Uh, we poll hard to get Shaw in class, so she is one of uh, many of us that are in a little bit of an overload. But uh, Shaw is outstanding, in, including the, the medical pathology and medical screening, pharmacology, and then of course in the orthopedic content as well. And she teaches in both uh, both of our programs. She's continued to stay active in outpatient uh, practice at High Point uh, Physical Therapy, and uh, has just embarked on a new program where she. Uh, uh, is engaged in uh, residency training for groups in Kenya, so she's traveling a lot as well. So, outstanding uh, work by by Shala. Uh, next is our newest faculty, uh, Dr. Hebner, Bethany Hebner. Uh, Bethany is from uh, Evansville originally. Uh, went to the University of Alabama in Huntsville, where she played volleyball. Went to Indiana University to get her DPT degree, and uh, has been working in Evansville. She's helped us uh, with adjunct teaching over the years. She's a graduate of our residency program that we have with Pro Rehab, and as I mentioned, just so excited that she is now a full-time assistant professor with us in her first semester. Um, she's taking on some medical pathology content as well as musculoskeletal area uh, where she's expert in, uh, in that in sports and continuing to stay involved in the uh, residency program. She's continuing to do outpatient practice uh, at Pro Rehab and has already had a couple of publications presented national papers, and also has a manual therapy uh, certificate. So we're excited to have, uh, have Bethany on board. Next is uh, Mary Kessler. Mary uh, is an associate professor here. She is in her 23rd year uh, at the university. She was uh, the chair and, and um, director of the program for 17 years. Um, so uh, now has moved actually for uh, an interim uh, position as associate dean of the College of Education and Health Sciences. Uh, has been uh, uh, obviously held the program together and led the program through so much over the years, and we, we thank her for that. She continues to stay active in teaching in a neuro area and clinical and professional uh, development and is also the PTA program director. Um, she uh, continues her clinical practice in, in geriatrics um, and has had a variety of research uh, topics published as well. So a variety of uh, awards and, and accolades from Mary has just been a, um, uh, held the department together and uh, just a tremendous amount of leadership over the years. So we thank uh, Mary for that. Uh, next is me. Uh, I am uh, happy to say the first line that I'm on sabbatical this fall. So um, I won't meet the students till next year when I uh, take over in January as the department chair and director of the program. Uh, but I have uh, been here 15 years. Uh, I started in athletic training and have been in the physical therapy uh, program for the most of that. Uh, I teach in the musculoskeletal area and uh, wellness and exercise, uh, and also a bit in the scientific inquiry, the research uh, sequence. I'm still involved in um, outpatient practice at Pro Rehab where I treat patients. Uh, my research interests are in injury prevention, uh, and movement-oriented screening, testing, and assessment. And my initial research and dissertation work was uh, more toward the low back pain uh, areas. Um, probably the, 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 one of the most fun things that I've got to do over the years is travel quite a bit and teach and do research in a variety of countries. So uh, it's been exciting to understand what goes on in rehab uh, medicine and, and rehabilitation sciences around the world. So um, been a good opportunity for me. Uh, Janice Kidder is in her second year as our administrative assistant. Uh, Janice has done an outstanding job. Again, got thrown right into our accreditation year, so she got, uh, got uh, baptism by fire, I guess. But she has a uh, bachelor's degree from USI and an associate's degree in communication, and it's been a, a big part of our uh, department. I'm glad she is here as well. Uh, next is Dr. Tink Martin. Uh, Tink is in her 32nd year at the University of Evansville, uh, and she just uh, last month, or this month, I guess, actually, uh, graduated with her PhD from the University of Kentucky in Rehabilitation Sciences. And so we um, congratulate Dr. Martin on that accomplishment. Um, that is a, a difficult task uh, at any point in your career. Uh, she has a degree from North Carolina, a degree from Duke, a degree from Tulane. And as I look through Kentucky, North Carolina, and Duke, 
I wonder what she does during the Final Four time in March Madness. She's going to be a little conflicted. She is well known uh, in the country as an expert in pediatrics, including being the president of the, uh, of the section on pediatrics for the APTA, a chief delegate um, and chapter delegate in Indiana of APTA, and a variety of other awards. So Tink is a well known um, across the country in, in pediatrics, and we're just so excited that she is here and, and currently serving as the interim chair uh, as I am on my sabbatical. Next is Joni McPhilia. Joni uh, was just promoted to associate professor and gained tenure uh, last year, so congratulations to Joni. Um, she has degrees uh, from the University of Kentucky in Western Kentucky, and her PhD focused on health service administration and research from Old Dominion. Um, she's in her seventh year here. She teaches in a variety of areas for us in both programs, including uh, professional uh, issues and ethics, uh, and teaches a variety of classes within our research or scientific inquiry sequence as well. Her clinical practice is in pediatrics, and so she works over at the uh, um, Rehab Center, Easter Seals Rehab Center. Um, she uh, does a variety of things for the department across campus, um, has helped with a number of uh, committees within the department, and we thank her uh, for that. Uh, next is Dr. Phil Plisky. Uh, Phil is a graduate of the program in 1998, and. Um, went on to get a board certification in orthopedics and a doctoral degree from Rocky Mountain University in 2007. He did a variety of teaching for us on and off over the years and has been back full time now in his fifth year. Uh, he teaches uh, in the uh, leadership and uh, clinical uh, professional issues, practice administration, the musculoskeletal area where he uh, has his expertise clinically and then is also the sports residency program director. So he got that program started, and uh, it's just been an outstanding uh, program for, for us and, and pro rehab locally, where we have now, I believe, 11 graduates of the program, all of which have successfully completed their certification uh, test on the first try, so that's exciting. Continues to practice outpatient therapy and does a lot of mentoring with his residents um, here. And he is inv involved in a variety of research projects um, most notably, a, a large military project that is uh, designed to help injury prevention and prediction in the U.S. military, and so he's developed a variety of software tools with that and been uh, a big part of that, including a large grant that was awarded uh, to a variety uh, of researchers uh, that he um, was one of the main, uh, re one of the, the team leaders on. And then he's done a, a lot of consulting in, in uh, both uh, military as well as college and professional sports, um, including kind of a funny story. He said that he said this team called and they wanted me to work with them a little bit. He goes, I think it's baseball, the Brewers, right? I said, yeah, I feel the Brewers are baseball. You need a little help with baseball. He goes, well, yeah, maybe a little help with baseball. So he did some work with them in, I guess, January or whatever. And um, recently, I sent him a little text message. And I sent him just a, a snapshot of the standings where the Brewers were leading their division. And he sent me a message back and he said, baseball, right? <laughs> <laughs> so he's busy with his four kids, I guess, and not uh, <laughs> following a lot of baseball. Uh, next is uh, Janet Sapansky. Uh, Janet is an assistant professor here. She's in her 21st year at the university and has um, the uh, demanding job of being the director of clinical education. So uh, Janet uh, organizes and uh, coordinates and administers uh, all of our clinical affiliations, which are in uh, probably as many as 40 states and uh, seven or eight countries at any one time. So a big, big job and does an outstanding uh, job with that as we continue to make that a personal part of our program. Uh, she is very active uh, clinically uh, at the, uh, as inpatient rehab at Deaconess and teaches uh, in the geriatric content uh, within the, in the program and is, is a geriatric clinical specialist. So has continued to do a uh, tremendous amount of work, including uh, a variety of research um, uh, projects uh, in cultural awareness and clinical education. She's also known nationally as a clinical education trainer, so she works with clinical instructors and conducts seminars across the country, so uh, very excited and, and we're honored and blessed to have Jan uh, with us. Uh, next is Yuri Yoshida. Uh, Yuri uh, got her physical therapy training in Japan and then came to the United States where she got her master's degree and her, and her PhD in biomechanics from the University of Delaware. She then went on and did a postdoc fellowship at the University of Utah and has been with us at the University of Evansville now for uh, three years. She has a variety of teaching areas, uh, including uh, modalities, uh, testing and measurement, and kinesiology within both departments, and is very active uh, clinically, working um, uh, 
uh, in outpatient uh, physical therapy and with her research projects, which uh, are quite uh, in-depth uh, looking at uh, primarily now total knee replacements and functional outcomes uh, and training protocols uh, post-total knee with arthritis being such a, a big problem. So she is a very active uh, researcher. Um, and uh, again, just so happy to have uh, uh, Yuri with us. Uh, and she gets pulled a lot of directions as well, teaching uh, in both programs. And that is it. Pleasure to introduce everyone. And uh, again, I am a, uh, welcome and thank you for being here. Next, we would like to welcome two speakers for the ceremony. The first is Dr. Tink Martin, who is acting as our department chair this semester. Good afternoon. I'd like to add my, thank, my thanks for the committee of students who did such a great job putting this all together. Uh, my remarks are going to be fairly short. Um, I just wanted to kind of give a little bit of an overview of kind of our view of the white coat ceremony. This is our third uh, white coat ceremony, and um, you've heard in medicine that 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 kind of that ritual was started back in the uh, early 90s and quickly spread to lots of different medical schools. And uh, most health professions now have some white coat ceremony. Oftentimes the, the white coat is given after the first didactic year. So the, these students would have to wait another whole year if they were in another place before they got their white coats, kind of symbolizing the transition from going from classroom learning to the clinic. But here at Evansville, we do such a good job of kind of weaving those clinical experiences and uh, experiential things and service learning into the curriculum that we feel that it's really important for the students to have that white coat at the very beginning of their of their PT program. Now they've already weathered anatomy and they're 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 glad they're here. Um, so think of it as as a rite of passage to get the white coat. Um, the white coat really for me symbolizes professionalism, integrity pride and commitment to excellence in all that you do. And that's something that we strive in the UE uh, PT programs to emulate that, that excellence. And as well, we want you to think about this as a way to recognize the change in status from being undergraduates to now being graduate students in a professional program. And with that become, comes uh, a little bit of responsibility as well as the rights and privileges of being a graduate student. So what you will find is that we have high expectations for you and we know that you will not disappoint us because we have faith in you. So think about the white coat as also um, representing our continued support of you as you go through that transformation that we know that you will um, be part of as you go from learning and practicing uh, and applying clinical reasoning in order to provide evidence-based practice and to demonstrate cultural competence, which is what is expected of a doctor of physical therapy in the 21st century. And I think that um, Camille gave you the 2020 vision of doctoring in physical therapy. Well, APTA has, um, in the 2013 House of Delegates, which is our legislative body, the new vision now for physical therapy that transcends, if you will, the doctoring profession because we've really arrived there. We have now uh, only doctors that are going to be practicing physical therapy. But the vision statement is to transform society by optimizing movement to improve the human experience. And it's very succinct because that's really what we are. We're the movement specialists, and that's what we're going to be um, teaching your sons and daughters to be those movement specialists so they can go out and practice in the 21st century. Thank you. I don't want to take away anybody else. Make sure I don't make it. Thank you, Dr. Martin. Uh, for our final speaker, we would like to invite Katie Whetstone to the stage. She is a 2012 graduate of the University of Evansville Doctor of Physical Therapy program. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here today. It's an, an honor to get to speak to you as a graduate and uh, no longer as a student. Um, 
like she said, I am a graduate of our program. I started out at the University of Evansville in undergrad, um, majoring in exercise science, like most of you, and uh, graduated in 2012 from the Doctorate of Physical Therapy program. Then went on to complete the U of E Pro Rehab Sports Residency program, and now I work in Newburgh as um, an outpatient and sports physical therapist. So I just have to say I'm so excited for you guys, and I apologize, parents and family. Um, I'm mostly going to be addressing students, but I just have to say this is such a fantastic program, and I'm so glad that you're here. And I know that this is a little bit of an awkward transition for some of you guys, especially most of you or all of you, if I'm not mistaken, having started here at U of E and now continuing at U of E. And it was probably hard for a lot of you seeing the roommates and the friends that you made as freshmen now graduate and move on, go somewhere different. And I know it's kind of a, an awkward transition for you guys, but I have to promise you and believe me, when I say that the best is still yet to come. These next three years are going to be amazing. And yes, they're hard and sometimes stressful. And parents, don't give them too much of a hard time if they don't call you back right away. <laughs> there might be a test the next day or the next week or midterms a month from now, but they're really stressed out. And um, so just forgive them. They love you anyway. But. Again, I hope you guys know how wonderful of a program this is and how lucky you guys are to be here. I mean, were you listening as Kyle was um, introducing all of your professors? I mean, the people who sit in front of you are literally some of the best physical therapists in the world. I mean, they write the books on physical therapy, as you'll find out as you may buy their books next semester. <laughs> but it's truly a blessing for you guys to get to be here. And if you haven't already, sometime this semester, or within the next year, you're gonna start hearing about these things called the APTA core values. And they'll be in your portfolios, and Phil and other professors may start to talk about them in your professional is issues classes. And yeah, yeah, you'll think about them, you'll write your goals based off of them, and you may think about, okay, just moving on. But what I want you guys to realize is that these are not just words to be learned, and then pass aside. These are things that the APTA has defined as a physical therapist. These are things that you will put on and um, will go out into the world donned. So today, as we have the white coat ceremony, I want you to think about these core values as a suit of armor or as your coat that you're putting on as you go out into the world as a physical therapist. The core values, as read earlier, are accountability, altruism, compassion and caring, excellence, integrity, professional duty, and social responsibility. And so while you all feel like you probably have a good grasp on what those mean, you are going to start to learn about what they truly mean in a clinical setting. So for example, altruism. If you don't know what it means, it basically means putting someone else before yourself. In the patient setting, like the clinical setting with a patient, it means putting the patient's needs before your own, which can sometimes be a little bit difficult, but also extremely important. So maybe it's just something small, like say you don't work and go to work until eight o'clock in the morning, but a patient really, really needs to come and see you at 7.30 because that's the only time they have available. Being altruistic is all about going ahead in at 7.30 in the morning and seeing them because that's what they need and that's what's best for them. Or it could be something a little bit more significant, like when you go out into the waiting room and you grab them and you say, hey, how are you today? And their demeanor is just one where you can tell they are just having a really rough week. Being altruistic means setting your computer down, putting your plan for the day aside, and just sitting down, looking them in the eye, and listening to them. Because maybe something really major is going on in their life. And being altruistic is all about caring for them as a whole, and not just about what, you're, what body part you're treating them for. Being caring may be something that you all feel like you have a good grasp on. Because why else would you be here? I mean, if you didn't care about people, this would not be <laughs> the right profession for you. But Caring in the clinical setting means going above and beyond. And so an example, 
Um, I had a patient recently who had had a stroke a couple of years ago, and she had been through lots and lots of physical therapy, and then she finally wound up with me in an outpatient setting. And um, she, despite all the therapy she had had, she still had um, severe weakness on the whole left side of her body. And so coming into therapy was a feat in itself, let alone going out and doing anything else that she needed to do in life. And one day we were talking in the clinic and found out that she hadn't had a haircut in a year because she couldn't afford it. One, it was hard to actually get there and pay for it. But two, in order for her to leave her house, she had to call a transportation service to come get her in her wheelchair. She didn't have a ramp, so to get down the stairs and actually get into um, a van or a bus that could take her there. And so it was a little thing like that, but she was just really disappointed about that. So we all kind of started talking about it, and we all just decided to throw in five bucks, find a cosmetologist that would come and cut her hair at home. And it made such a difference. And that's what's being caring and compassionate for your patients is about. It's not just caring about their physical needs, but caring about all their other needs, including the emotional ones. Have you guys ever heard the term, like, the world is your oyster? Well, it's kind of a weird term, but basically being excellent means that the physical therapy world is your oyster is your oyster. It means that in physical therapy, you can do whatever it is that you want to do. The sky is the limit. Being excellent means that you use the best care available, but that you're also willing to make the best care available. You're also willing to take a risk and be wrong, but you're being excellent. And that I want you guys to know that even though this is your first year, you guys are excellent because you will be graduates of the University of Evansville. And next summer, when you guys go out on clinicals, your CIs or your clinical instructors will look for you for advice because they are so excited and so hungry to get the newest and the greatest out there. And you guys will have that. You guys are excellent. Lastly, professional duty basically means you're serving your profession and giving back to your profession. And there are a thousand different ways that you can do this. Serving on the APTA board is one of them. Doing research, going out into your community and talking about the profession and your health. Those are all ways um, to do your professional duty. For me, um, the way that I give back to my profession is by being a clinical instructor or a mentor. Or even just when I have high school students that want to talk to me about PT, being willing to say yes when they want to come in and observe. And if you guys didn't realize already, you're in a really cool profession. I mean, do people love to talk about PT with you guys? If they don't, now they will. I mean, my friends all the time have questions for me, and people love to talk about this. So be proud of what you're doing, and be excited to talk about it, and be willing to go out into the community and serve. And that's doing your professional duty. So just a reminder that whenever you start getting these assignments in class, don't just treat them as an assignment. They're not just a bunch of words to quickly write down a goal about and then to be forgotten about. I truly want you guys to think about putting on these values, putting on this armor as you go out into the world. And remember, you are already caring and compassionate and altruistic and excellent or else you wouldn't be here. And yes, again, I say you're excellent because there may be some times in the upcoming months that you don't feel so excellent, but you are. So good luck, you guys. I'm so excited for you. We will now be presenting the students with their white coats. The names will be read by Bethany Hebner, and the students will be receiving their coat from their faculty advisor. So um, if the students could go ahead and stand up and take their place in line, we will now present the coats. Okay, up first, Kelly Garrison.
Miranda Graham. Liz Graper. Jordan Coker. Margaret Spann. Jessica Stones. Catherine Harville. Jordan Jones. Katrina Kane. Molly Holtis. Nicole Ivanovic. Brittany Sheffield. Aaron Stye. Amanda Strom. Danielle Hall Harlan. Caitlin Harty. Melissa Barber. Ethan Brown. Sarah Jocks. Sean Sizemore. Kylie Lewis. Alyssa Moran. Mary Beth Niece. Libby Peterson.
Adam Bargy. Haley Campbell. <laughs> Mara Huber. Kristen Lund. Sophia Polaulis. Morgan Pruitt. Alexandria Rubin. Taylor Shotwell. Michelle Tipton. Jillian Jantz. Sarah Canoodle. Adria Maringer. Kristen Showlander. <laughs> Ryan Thornton. Abigail Yenzer. Cheryl Zerlini. Logan Blair. Jillian Block. Marge Campbell. Amity Hendershot. Mackenzie Mangles. Madison Turner. At this time, will the students please stand and join me in reciting the Code of Ethics for a Physical Therapist. Any PTs in the audience may join as well. Physical therapists shall respect the inherent dignity and rights of all individuals. 
Physical therapists shall be trustworthy and compassionate in addressing the rights and needs of patients. Physical therapists shall be accountable for making sound professional judgments. Physical therapists shall demonstrate integrity in their relationships with patients, families, colleagues, students, research participants, other healthcare providers, employers, peers, and public. Physical therapists shall fulfill their legal and professional obligations. Physical therapists shall enhance their expertise through the lifelong acquisition and refinement of knowledge, skills, abilities, and professional behaviors. Physical therapists shall promote organizational behaviors and business practices that benefit patients and societies. You may be seated. Congratulations, Doctor of Physical Therapy students. Let this white coat be a symbol of your achievements and constant dedication to the physical therapy profession. Thank you, faculty and staff, for your continued support, which has made this third annual event possible. Thank you also, family and friends, for your love and support of these future Doctors of Physical Therapy. At this time, we would like to invite family and friends to congregate outside for a small reception. Students, please remain close to the stage to take a class photo. After the photo has been taken, feel free to join your family and friends outside for the reception. And the photographers will also be available for individual pictures after the group picture is taken. Thank you guys and have a great afternoon.